Abraham's seed, part two. Galatians chapter three expository video. Uh, this is part two. We will be picking up here in verse 19 of Galatians chapter uh, chapter three. Excuse me, Galatians chapter three. Um, make sure you check out the first uh, part of this video so you don't break the train of thought theater. Okay, and the um, link for part one will be in the description box as this will be in the description box of part one. Okay, so we're going to jump right in and pick up where we left off in the previous video at verse 19. In Galatians chapter 3, get your authorized version of the scripture and follow me along. Wherefore, verse 19, wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was made and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator mediator not meteor that comes out of the sky by the way first timothy chapter one first timothy chapter one 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 11. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 11. Now the end of the commandment is charity, self-sacrifice, out of a pure heart. A pure heart is one that belongs to God. And of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. From which some, having swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good, if a man use it lawfully. The law is good? Yes. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for men manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, sodomites. For men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Wherefore then serveth the law, it was added because of transgressions, Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was obtained, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Let's read verse 15. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Oh, I'm chief, but it's their fault that I'm a chief. personal accountability and responsibility unto the Lord for your sin. Thank you, pardon. It's your fault. And like Paul, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. We're all sinners. Yeah, hide yourself under the umbrella so you can dodge accountability to God. No. Of whom I am chief. Romans chapter 7, boy. Come on. Come on. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Verses 19. Romans chapter 7. I just lost my place. Verses 19 on to verse 25. Romans chapter 7. Verses 19 on to verse 25. 
For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Paul struggled with sin. And he is the greatest of the church of the living God. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would, not, would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity of the, to the law of sin, which is in my members. In your members, law of sin, in your flesh. Okay? O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Now, Paul's not saying, well, hey, it's okay to sin, you're going to sin anyway, but hey, you're still sin. No, what is he saying? He's acknowledging, it's like, look, Sin is, flesh is sinful. All flesh is sinful. Even the flesh of Jesus Christ was sinful. Okay? That doesn't mean that Jesus sinned, you idiot. No, because God could not sin. No, no. I've explained that before. Okay? But all flesh is sinful. Okay? Remember, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. The flesh, flesh is not God, you devils. Okay? Get a load of that. But, unless the law said, don't covet, you wouldn't know to covet. Right? Wherefore then serveth the law, as we have already looked? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Verse 20. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 6. I exhort, therefore, that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Why do you pray for kings and stuff like that? So we of the church of the living God may live a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Okay? That's why. So that we living like that can be in samples onto the lost. By word and by deed. Okay? For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Hey, Calvin! <laughs> who would have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Okay. For there is one God... And one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus and his mother Mary? No. For there is one God, spirit, soul, and body, God is one, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. I don't see anything written. I don't see anything about Mary. Huh. Interesting. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Hmm. So there's only one mediator. Not a co-redemptrix. Hmm. And Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Verses 11 on to verse 18. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 on to verse 18. But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come, 
by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us, not continually as the satanic Catholics tell you. Okay? For, for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot, sinless, to God, Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he, singular, is the mediator, singular, of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, because by that you were made aware, by the law you were made aware that, whoa, you're a sinner. By the law, you were made aware that not only are you a sinner, but you can't keep God's perfect commandments perfectly without ever sinning. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Uh, are you looking at this? For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. The testator. The death. The death of the testator. Death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, before Israel went to go into the promised land, Moses died before they went into the promised land? The death of the testator? Okay. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without flesh. Oh, excuse me, without blood. Okay? Do you see that? The New Testament begins with the death of the testator. And there's only one mediator. Jesus Christ. Catholic. Not your Jesuit priest, who is another Christ. Not Mary. You know, Semiramis. Uh, Queen of Heaven. That kind of thing. Yeah. No, not her. There's only one mediator. Definitely not Sosa. Jesus Christ. The mediator between God and men. Only one mediator, okay? Verse 21 in Galatians chapter 3. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid, right? Look at this. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, Verily, righteousness should have been by the law. Hmm. Romans chapter 7, verses 12 on to verse 18. See how we do it? See how we do that? Romans chapter 7, verses 12 on to verse 18. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, which the law revealed unto you, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. What does that mean? Before the law, before you know what the Ten Commandments are, the law of Moses, that kind of stuff, would you know that 
You weren't supposed to covet. You weren't supposed to lie. You weren't supposed to commit adultery. Okay? You were not supposed to set up idols. Okay? Have no false gods. How would you know that? Unless it was given to you in the law. And the purpose of the law was to show you, us, that we're sinners. And that even at our best state, man is altogether vanity. That we could never perfectly keep that which the Lord gave. Hence why God uh, provided himself a lamb for a burnt offering. God shall provide himself a lamb for burnt offering, himself, God himself, okay? Verse 14, for we know that the law is spiritual. It is, it's not a faith. But I am carnal, fleshly, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not, sin. For what I would, that do I not. Not sin, but what I hate, sin, that do I. You got these twits talking about, I don't sin anymore. They're calling God a liar, and also they're calling the Apostle Paul a liar. Because Paul right there is telling you, I sin and I hate it, but I can't stop it. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good because the law tells you what sin is. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. You filthy Catholics who defend the flesh, for I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. Oh, excuse me, we already read that. But you got the point. Let's read verse 18 again. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Okay? Now, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 unto verse 11. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, who would turn to their own vomit, by the way. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. See, you guys who threaten me about the skin suit, you, okay, you, you, the veil is removed. You're a Catholic because you have confidence in the flesh. You don't love God. God to you is a, God to you is flesh. That's not God. God was manifest in the flesh. Okay? You guys are antichrist. Why? Because you serve flesh. Okay? That's all you serve. Okay? You are dogs. You are evil workers. Okay? And we of the church of the living God have no confidence in flesh. Especially a perfectly round, sun-shaped bail cookie. Okay? Don't choke on that, bud. Okay? Verse 4. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. Look at now. Get a load of this. If any man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Look at what he runs down. Circumcised the eighth day. Circumcision was a dictate of the law, first given to Abraham before the law, but continued in Israel under the law. Okay? Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, 
of the, tri of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. He kept the law blameless. Blameless. Not perfectly. Blameless. Because no one could keep it perfectly except God manifest in the flesh, you idiot. Okay? So, let's continue. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, as we already explained in the previous video. Okay? That faith of Abraham that was centered on God, on what he will do. Whereas today, our faith is centered on God, what he has already done, what has been done. But see, now this is talking about the works of the law. But if you do something, like save yourself by your belief, you are trusting in what you do. Not having faith on God for what he has done. Our faith is the answer, is the response to God's grace. Because without his grace, you are not saved. <gasps> okay? Deal with it. Verse 16. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Death to the world. A life of charity, self-sacrifice, dying to self. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And Romans chapter 10. Here's where, here's where we get good, yeah? Romans chapter 10. Verses 1, on to verse 10. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them a record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. There it is for all you heretics right there in verse 3. You're saved by your belief. Your belief. It's your salvation, all right? Yeah. You're saved because deep down somewhere, you're a good person, right? Yeah. You're saved because you cleaned up your life. Yeah. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and some willfully ignorant, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. How is that so? Because you can't keep the law. The law is there to show you you're a sinner and can't do it. Christ paid the penalty for our sins. Under the law, the Levitical law, were the sacrifices, the turtle doves and the, you know, of goats and bulls and stuff like that. He made one offering where he offered himself, shed his blood on the cross, died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. It's done. That's what we have faith on. And we, and we having faith on that, our answer to his grace for his death for us is our faith. See? Okay? This is very simple. But you Catholic devils, you like to twist it, which you always do. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, 
that is, to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Oh, but this is for the Jews. <laughs> right? Yeah, this is for the Jews. For the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> the lesser is blessed by the better and see that's that's the thing brethren these heretics they don't want to humble themselves you're saved by your belief oh you're you're proud you're full pride you think you're a good person or you've given up it's all pride it's all pride. Only a lost devil would dispute this. Only a lost devil would dispute that. And, and now let's read verse 22. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, yes it has, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. <laughs> Verses 10 on to verse 19. See how we did that? Romans 3, verses 10, on to verse 19. As it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. My mother could not get past that, who died on the 24th of December. Five years ago, this 24th. She couldn't get past this verse. That there was none righteous, that there is none that doeth good, no, not one. No one is good, including you. But then again, if you save yourself by your belief, then you're pretty good, aren't you? Or if there's something in you that God saw good enough for, you, for him to die for you, right? Then you're pretty good, aren't you? Oh, you gave up all this stuff, then you are pretty good, aren't you? You denying clear scripture, boy. Their throat is an open sepulcher. Not sepulcher. <laughs> sepulcher. With their tongues, they have used deceit. The poison of asps which is a deadly poison, is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Look at these devils who can put on a good facade, huh? Yeah. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. There is no fear of God before their eyes. You have no peace because there is no fear of God before your eyes. Very simple. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. The law shows us that we are guilty before God, that we can't save ourselves, and that at our best states, we are altogether vanity. Okay? Romans chapter 10, <laughs> verses 11 
on the verse 13. See how we did that? For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now these hyper-dispensational twits will say this is for the Jews because it says this in Joel. Uh, no, you moron, uh, moronos. This means it's crossing dispensational lines. That's what that means. Okay, Calling upon the name of the Lord. You come to him broken and contrite, godly sorrow, and in fear of the Lord, call upon his name. It's a lot easier than these devils want you to believe. But see, you got to get it over yourself. You got to accept that truth in Romans chapter uh, 3, verse 12, that there is none good, not one, and that includes you. But, you know, keep on believing because you saved yourself just because you believed. Or keep on believing that there was something in you that God saw good enough to save you. Or because you, you got rid of all this stuff. Yeah. Now, let's read verses 23 on to verse 24 here. Verses 23 on to verse 24 in Galatians chapter 3. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 11 on to verse 18. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made with hands. That at that time ye were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were, were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. I just lost my, uh, I just lost my place. <laughs> okay, verse 14, sorry. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, sin, sin, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, a new creature, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Through him. One Spirit. Uh, for through him we both have access by one Spirit Onto the Father. And what were we at verse 23? But the scripture, uh, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up onto the faith which, sh which should afterward, afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us onto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Now, verses 19 on to verse 22 in Ephesians chapter 2. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, 
but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. And while we're here, while we're here, let's read Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. You have to study uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. You have to study to shew thyself approved unto God, that you be a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This whole book is written for you, but it is not all written to you. See, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. Be dispensational. Ephesians 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. We're, we're adding this. This wasn't to the notes. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Mystery of Christ. God was manifest in the flesh, people. In the flesh. Flesh is not God. Okay? Flesh is not God. Okay? Jesus, you idiots. You say, just because you can say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Who has his little boy toy minions doing his work for him. <laughs> yeah, brave, brave man that he is. Um, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Hello, genius. Hello, genius. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? But then again, you're lost. You don't get it. How can you? Because you're spiritually discerned. That's why. But anyway, anyway, okay. But the mystery is, you know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. The mystery that the Gentile would be grafted into the tree of the Jew. Okay. That God manifest in flesh, would die, bury, and raise again the third day according to the scriptures? See, it's a mystery because you devils can't understand it. You make flesh your God. Every single one of you, you make, flesh is God to you, just like your father, Satan. And verse 5, for those of you who say, they were looking forward to the cross in Genesis, in the chapters of Genesis. Which, in other ages, was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the capital S Spirit. And here is the mystery, <laughs> that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, the good news, okay, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of his power. <laughs> oh, you idiot devils. Oh, you idiot devils. <laughs> and I'm trying to be polite when I say that. Call them idiots. For they are without, they are void of logic and reason. Absolutely they are. Now, let's read verses 25 and 26 in Galatians chapter 3. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. 
Ver, uh, Ephesians chapter 2 now. Verses 4 on to verse 10. See how we did that? We already read. We already read uh, 8 on to verse 10 in Ephesians chapter 2. But we're going to read it again. Okay? So bear with us. Bear with me, okay? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 on to verse 10. Okay? But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. For by your belief ye are saved. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. By being a good person ye are saved. Oh, by putting away all kinds of stuff, ye are saved. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, ages to come, he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Can't, can't skip these, even though we already read them. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay? And now, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verses 12 on to verse 17. Romans chapter 8, verses 12, on to verse 17. What is this? Okay. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 12, on to verse 17. Therefore, brethren, those who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church and living God, new creatures in Christ Jesus. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh, like all you Catholics do. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit, capital S, do mortify, put down the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now hold on a second there. In verse 14. Led by the Spirit of God. Can you discern the difference between you being led by your own flesh rather than being led by the Spirit? How many of these devils are led by their flesh? All of them pretty much. Okay? Verse 15, picking up. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the Spirit, capital S, of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Adoption. Adopted. You know, you adopt a child that is not of your own blood, of your own flesh or kindred, but you adopt them into your family. We, who are not of the Jew, of the Hebrew, the Gentile, the mystery, are grafted in, adopted in, by faith. By grace, through our faith. Okay? Verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Okay? Okay? Now, verse 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ 
have put on Christ. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verses 3, on to verse 14. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Baptized. Identified with his death. Dying to the world. Okay? Baptism is not a requirement for your salvation, Catholic. Okay? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. I am dead unto the world, being crucified with Christ. Our old man, crucified unto this. Okay? Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Why? Because flesh is corruptible. Okay? For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not Sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Hold on one second, brethren. Sorry about that. Galatians, uh, Colossians chapter 3. Now, verses 10 under verse 17. And have put on the new man. Remember, our old man is crucified. Okay? And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or, nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, Meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Look at that verse. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. 
Walk your talk. Speak the truth of Scripture. Adhere to the Scripture. Okay? Now, verse 28. Verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, see, this is talking about salvifically, in salvation. Culturally, there are differences. But in salvation, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all that in every place Call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Let's read verse 3. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. We, we already read this again. We read this before, but we're going to read it again. We're going to read it again. Absolutely. We have to. Okay? We have to. I'm going to read it again. Galatians chapter 2, verses 20, on to verse 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. I know we already read this in the previous video. We had to touch it again. Okay? Had to touch it again. This is talking about salvation. And also Galatians chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 16. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Remember, many can have a changed life. Lordship salvationists, they have a changed life. Those who go to AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, they have a changed life, don't they? Yeah, they do. But are they a new creature? See, through the, through the flesh, you can make a lot of things and have yourself a, um, a changed life. You can change a lot of things through the flesh. But if it's coming, what the Lord has put in, are you working out? And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. Let's go ahead and finish this chapter here. From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. In Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verses 21 on to verse 29. And you, that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Remember, God will provide himself a lamb 
for a burnt offering. And it is by the death of the testator. Okay? Okay? Verse 23. Let's read verse 22 again. In the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of truth, which is the church, <laughs> whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which hath been <laughs> which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints that weren't looking forward to the cross all the way back in Genesis there, people. Okay? To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you hope of glory whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus perfect in heart perfect in relationship to our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father whereunto I also labor striving according to his working which worketh in me Mightily. Mightily. One second, brethren. Sorry about that. Now, let's finish this together, okay? And verse 29. And if ye be Christ's, if ye be Christ's, not little Christ's, but if you belong unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Abraham's seed. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 16 on to verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 16 on to verse 23. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men. <laughs> let no man glory in men. Why? For all things are yours whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And ye are Christ's and Christ is God's. That is, if ye be Christ's, you belong unto him. You are his purchased possession. And go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. <laughs> Romans chapter 8. One second, please. Sorry about that. Romans chapter 8. You see how we did this? Verses 5 on to verse 11. 
Romans chapter 8, verses 5 on to verse 11. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the capital S spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded, fleshly minded, is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And you Catholics who center all your time on flesh, you're carnally minded, doing the dictates that Mr. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, call you to. Yeah. Yeah. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. In the flesh, going after the flesh, living after your flesh. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man hath not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if ye be Christ's, if you belong to him. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. <laughs> okay? Now, Ephesians chapter 3, we already read that. Go to Titus. Go to Titus now. Chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. Verses 1 unto verse 7. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, shewing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his flesh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, but being justified by his grace. We should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And first Timothy. Chapter two. No, you know what? You know what, brethren? I think we have established. What does it mean to be Abraham's seed? What does it mean to be Abraham's seed? Abraham's seed is the actual physical de descendants, Israel, the Hebrew. But we who are Gentiles are Abraham's seed because we have that faith of Abraham who believed God, that God would do what he said he was going to do. F going from faith to faith, believing in what God, believing on God, what he will do. And today in this dispensation, we believe what God has done for us. And we have no confidence in the flesh, none whatsoever. Hence, what it means to be Abraham's seed. So, that, brethren, that is going to be it for this video. 
I cannot take credit for this video. There were many who helped me with this video. Several brethren and um, uh, dearly, dearly beloved. Um, many helped me to bring this video out. I was not, you know, many people contributed to this. And unto all of you, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Hopefully this will clear up and answer what is Abraham's seed. We were tedious, yes, but for something of this magnitude, we needed to search the scriptures, whether these things were so. But for now, brethren, that is going to be it for this video. I'm um, going to uh, share with you some plans, Lord willing. Um, there may come another video this week. There may. I, I, I don't know. That's up to the Lord. Um, got uh, got some more stuff working um, that the Lord and I have been going through. Um, had a very interesting evening, of course, and uh, we'll see what the Lord does. But regardless, after this week, um, the week of New Year's, oh, excuse me, leading up to New Year's Eve, I'm not going to be doing some videos of say like from I don't know from like Monday until Friday it's going to take a little time because um like I said there may come another video this week we'll see what the Lord will do but um as I did last year there will be on the the 31st of this month Lord willing Lord willing uh a year in review video that will be on Friday, December 31st, New Year's Eve, will that video be done. And leading up to that video, like I said, going to take a little time off just to, you know, because there's a lot of stuff to go over. There's a lot of stuff to go over about 2021, isn't there? Oh, boy, all kinds of stuff has happened. Okay. And 2021 has been far worse than 2020 and at this rate 2022 is not looking to do any better so but that's that's lord willing that's what's going to be happening uh like i said this this is all up to the lord this is what he wants to do everything is in his hands okay if he wants to make this he can do it if he wants to break this he can do it it's up to him it's not up to you it's not up to me. So, But anyway, that's just a little heads up, brethren. Thank you to all our brothers and sisters in Christ who uh, pray for us, who help us, and who are there for us, those who are of like mind with us. We thank you. And um, I guess that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching these. If you do, remember uh, to check out the very first part of this video. And, um, yeah, thank you, brethren. We love you, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.